lấy dương bật to trẻ tôn chỉ môi nâng mê riêng dương bật to tiết trẻ tôn chỉ môi nâng lỡ lấy dương đo cả này sạc xa nữa So welcome welcome back we're going to uh, start with our second uh, part of our shock talk and we're going to continue with our case based format Lấy dương xa cung tổ lập một vết dương bật to mê riêng bật to tiết nâng cả dương lực dô bì cả này sạc xa So our second case is a 35-year-old female with shortness of breath and chest pain. Her vital signs are a temperature of 98 or normal, heart rate is fast, blood pressure is low, and breathing is fast. <coughs> Hãy dân mơ khơi xảy nhà chỉ vật bỏ cất cứ cầm đau sang sắp mùa cho trùng bớt Chịp chó đau lươn một tới cứ mở rồi và phay pram hay xung biệt chiếm cho tiếp Cứ phay sắp pram lơ sai sắp pram hay chứng vạn đằng hàm nhọp sai sắp nông mùa nhiệt tì We do our initial assessment, our general impression She's alert, she's speaking, she's breathing fast and shallow But her lungs are clear and her Pulse is weak and rapid. So we ask ourselves, what should we do next in this patient? And hopefully by now you remember that we want to not wait and start treatment. And we're going to start treatment with the IV and IV fluids. And we're going to give this patient who's having respiratory distress oxygen and consider a monitor. We then move on and we get, after our initial therapy, and get uh, history. And it's, her symptoms started one hour ago. And every time she breathes, her pain in her chest is worse. It is on her, the pain is on her right side. It is severe and sharp. And she's also noticed one-sided leg swelling. We then move on to our physical exam. And we look at our key findings on physical exam. Her lungs were clear, and when we look at her legs, we notice that her right leg is swollen. And we ask ourselves a question then, is this patient in shock? The answer is yes. And what is the cause, of, what is the most likely cause of this patient's shock? Good. So I hear people saying pulmonary embolus. 
And then what type of shock, what category of shock would that be? Obstructive. Obstructive. So pulmonary embolus is a cause of obstructive shock, and here is another cause of obstructive shock. And I saw actually this cause of obstructive shock in a patient, a young patient, very recently in Cambodia. And what you see on this ultrasound or echocardiogram is fluid around the heart that's shown by the green arrows. And that fluid or pericardial effusion is causing pressure and collapse of the right ventricle. And that collapse of the right ventricle and right atrium is blocking or obstructing the fluid returning to the heart. And we call this cardiac tamponade. Our next cause of obstructive shock is shown in this X-ray. And in this X-ray, you can see that the heart is pushed over to the left side of the chest. The right side is pushing over all of the mediastinum and even the airway. And this type is a tension pneumothorax. And tension pneumothorax is going to cause the same, a similar problem to cardiac tamponade, where the blood flow back to the heart is blocked. So for obstructive shock, we're going to we, we talk about pulmonary embolus, tension pneumothorax, and cardiac tamponade. And really the initial treatment for all of these is to try to overcome the obstruction by giving large boluses of IV fluids. And then to try to remove the obstruction, whether that is by decompressing a tension pneumothorax or draining a pericardial effusion. And then 
Now, our third case is a 55-year-old man with shortness of breath and chest pain. His heart rate is a little bit fast, and his blood pressure is low. This patient is breathing very fast and his oxygen saturation is also low. We're going to use our systematic approach and did our general impression and the patient is alert. He is unable to speak because he is too short of breath, but he does appear to be protecting his airway and has a gag reflex. His breathing uh, is fast, and when you listen to his lungs, you hear crackles or crepitations on both sides. His radial pulse is fast and weak. Actually, sorry, his no radial pulse, his carotid pulse, though, is fast and weak. So what should we do next for this patient? We're going to take a full history, do a full exam, and go to coffee. No, we're going to evaluate, think, and act at the same time. So we're going to start treatments. So we're going to place an IV, give the patient oxygen, put them on the monitor. We're going to collect a very a brief history. And the patient's pain and shortness of breath started five hours ago, and he had heavy chest pressure. He's had a heart attack before. We do a, a brief physical exam and see that it is very similar to our initial assessment, remarkable only for the, cr- the uh, vital signs, the respiratory distress, and the crackles in the lungs. Is this patient in shock? Yes. What is the cause of this patient's shock? Right, so acute myocardial infarction and heart failure leading to cardiogenic shock. Good, so we, while we are treating this patient for that, we get an x-ray. And this confirms our diagnosis. Now, there are a number of causes of cardiogenic shock, but the most common causes we're going to see 
are acute myocardial infarction or heart attack, chronic heart failure, and hypertensive emergency. Men mua hát chị chát, đại bọc coi bên cạnh dỗ sự nịch sọc nắng. Bọn tay mua hát xong khăn xong khăn, đại chụp nhung nhung kê ku nông cạn này, đại nè chị ngư men a chuột mà yoga cạn dỗ lịch sẵn, rưu cạn phát tìm yoga cạn. Nè chị ngư men ka soi bay đông ram rai, rưu cạn nè chị ngư đem men xong pit chim lang clang men ten. And to make the treatment easy, you can remember that if the blood pressure is very low, you're going to use a vasopressor. If the blood pressure is high, you're going to use a vasodilator and possibly diuretics. Our fourth and final case then is the 25-year-old man who was in the two-wheeler accident. He has abdominal pain. And this patient is tachycardic and hypotensive with a fast breathing. So we do our initial assessment and we see that the patient's level of consciousness is that he responds to pain. So he has a P on his AVPU scale. And then on the rest of his ABCs, we see he is not speaking, but he is protecting his airway. He has a rapid breathing, but it's clear, and he has a weak radial pulse. Hey, bà dân dương viên đồng lại từ lời ABC bến bàn đây tha nè chừng ngư nâng. Cứ mình ai nè dây bán. Ở nè chừng ngư, mình ai nè dây bán bán tế phá lọc chó cao bìa bàn lõ. Hay nè chừng ngư đo đừng hào nhóp xa xa, hay nâng xâm lê cho lâu đông xuất thòm ở đà. What should be done next? Ta dương tỏ thua ở vấy bà tỏa tiết. See, this is very familiar, right? We're going to start treatment. Because we know this patient is unstable and we need to evaluate them, think and act at the same time. And our treatment for this patient, is our initial treatment to start, is going to be IV, IV fluids, oxygen, and then consider, if you have it, a cardiac monitor. And is this patient in shock? The answer is yes. And what is the cause of shock? Bleeding. And this is hypovolemic shock. So when we talk about how we're going to treat these trauma patients, remember, most patients with trauma that are hypotensive are bleeding. So our goal is to give them IV fluids, preferably blood if it is available. And then obviously to stop the bleeding. And 
And that may be difficult to do at some of our hospitals, so we have to even consider transferring this patient. We mean car with bad on card per no no crumble tea pick la. Jung young, a white young trout, which are not good young trout for your mate when June at the noon, talk like now the mill out of Pietro ban. So, in summary, we want to evaluate patients for early and late signs of shock. Jung chis and cab young trout wait. As a general rule, we want to give IV fluids, except for in our patients with cardiogenic shock. And then we are going to try to figure out the cause of the shock and treat that specific cause. And don't forget to recheck on your patient regularly. I want to I want to thank you for your time, and I want a special thank you to uh, Dr. Dorith for his assistance with this uh, lecture, and we're happy to take any questions.